Okay, today we're going to look at the square root function. Particularly, we're going to look at the most basic square root function that you can encounter, which is y equals the square root of x. And we're going to graph it by drawing up a table of values. And we're going to talk about it generally at the beginning. So let's talk about it generally a bit. Uh, but the first thing that we should notice about this function, or, or that we should, that we should uh, consider, is the domain here because whenever we're looking at square root anything involving a square root it's often interesting to look at the domain uh, of, of the function. So here we've, we've remembering the domain is uh, is all the, the valid inputs that, uh, that are valid for this function. In other words all the x values that we could input into this function and get a valid y output value back. So here you might recall that if we have something that looks like this square root of minus 1. Well, we can't, we can't ascribe a real number to that. There's no real number that this represents. So for our purposes, this is, this is undefined. If we ever encounter minus 1, the square root of minus 1. In fact, if we ever encounter the square root of minus anything, the square root of some negative number, that is always undefined uh, for our purposes. And what this means is that the domain, the domain of this function, the domain is going to exclude all negative x values. If we substitute an x value in here, we won't be able to get any y value back. And so that x value isn't a negative x value or a negative value for x won't be part of the domain. However, all positive x values will be, and the square root of 0 equals 0, so 0 will be as well. It's only the negative numbers that are excluded. So the domain for this function will be x is greater than or equal to 0. And that's going to become useful in a moment when we draw up our table of values. Uh, so let's, let's get straight to it. Let's draw up a table of values. So let's draw up a list of x values and figure out their corresponding y values. And the ones that we'll choose here, are, uh, we'll choose x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, and x equals 4. OK, well, let's go ahead and figure out what the y values are associated for these. What we're going to do to consider what, what value y takes on here is whenever we see x, we're going to replace that with 0. So here, y will equal the square root of 0. Well, you might know that the square root of 0 is 0. If we times 0 by 0, we get 0. So this is going to equal 0. So that's our first point. So this point is the origin. OK, let's consider the next, uh, the next value. So at x equals 1, we have y equals the square root of 1. What's the square root of 1? Well, 1 times 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 is 1. So here we're going to have to point the point 1, 1 on our graph. What about at x equals 2? Well, at x equals 2, we get y equals the square root of 2. So y equals the square root of 2. Now, this isn't as easy as these ones. We're going to need a calculator to figure this out. Well, I've got a calculator here. And what we can do is we can figure out the square root of 2. And on this calculator, the way we do that is we press 2. And we go here and we do square root. So here you can see that's the square root, square root of x here. It's 2 and then that square root button. So here we get 1.41421, etc. Well, for our purposes, we'll just round it off to one decimal place. So what we'll do is we'll say 1.4. So here we've got the point 2, 1.4. Okay, let's have a look at, at x equals 3. So at x equals 3, we get y equals the square root of 3. Well, again, I don't know the square root of 3. We're going to have to get a calculator for that. So let's quickly have a look at our calculator here. So uh, type in 3 and then the square root. And that gives us 1.7320, etc. So again, we'll round it off to one decimal place. That's going to be 1.7. I'm going to round down here. So that's 1.7. This is going to be the point 3, 1.7. And here we'll have x equals 4. So at x equals 4, we've got y equals the square root of 4. Well, 2 times 2 equals 4. So the square root of 4 is simply 2. So we've got 4, 2. Now notice if we tried to sub in some non-zero value, say x equals minus 2, here we've got the square root of minus 2, 
and then we would have run into trouble and we would have realized that in fact minus two is not part of the domain. So thankfully we figured that out at the beginning such that we didn't do that, but it's always good to keep in mind. Okay, let's go ahead and plot these on our graph. So our first point is zero, zero, that's the origin. So that's this point here. Our next point is one and one. So that's one unit right of the origin and one unit up. That's the point here. Next we've got two and 1.4. So there's gonna be two units right of the origin and about 1.4 units up. Looks like it's gonna be about there. Next we've got three and 1.7. So it's gonna be three units right of the origin, 1.7 units up. That looks like about there. And then we've got four and two. So that's four units right of the origin and two units up. Right. Uh, so if we were to connect these points, we'd see that our function is going to look something like this, with an arrow here indicating that the function continues its behavior beyond the confines of this graph. Now noticeably, we've, we've got no, uh, no y values that are associated with any negative x values. That's because negative x values are excluded from our domain. So all these points are associated with positive or, or just simply non-negative x values. And indeed, all our y values are positive or zero. And we could have predicted that as well because we know that if we ever input any x value here, the square root of some value will always be positive. So sure enough, all our y values are positive here. We've got no y values in this region of the graph. Now, if this is the first time you've seen the square root function graphed before, one thing you might say is, well, Mark, this looks very much like the parabola. At least it looks like the shape of a parabola or a quadratic function. You might remember that the basic, the most basic um, quadratic function is y equals x squared. And we already know that y equals x squared looks, uh, looks something like this. If we were to plot a few points here, uh, y equals x squared. It's a parabola, so it looks something like this. Let's try and draw it as best we can here. It's not perfect, but it'll do. And it looks like these values, or this, this orange curve, is, is this part of this curve reflected through a diagonal line here. Or you could say that, it, that this curve looks very much like this curve just rotated 90 degrees. And that would be an astute observation to make. That would be a really good observation to make because sure enough, they are related. This shape is exactly the, sh so, so this shape in orange here, let me be clear. So this shape is exactly the same shape as this shape, this shape, this shape just here. So this shape, all, all we've done here is We've actually just rotated this round about 90 degrees. This shape is exactly the same as this shape. The reason is, is because here we've got, uh, another way to write this is y equals x to the power of a half. That's the same as saying the square root of x. They're the same thing. Uh, whereas here we've got y equals x squared. And so you can see we've got some sort of relation here. We've got x to the, to the power of two, here x is the power of one over two, and the result of that is it's the same shape. Uh, so that, that's, that's an interesting thing to note. And so we're done.